I wanted to try my hand at making a fantasy taxidermy. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I got to this point, um, but there's something special about this form. It is actually articulated so you can pose it to your heart's content. Hi, I'm Kazool and welcome to my lair. Now, like I said, I wanted to build a faux taxidermy, uh, fantasy based and a dragon. Uh, this idea originally came when I was at BlizzCon 2017, where they announced Alex Straza as the next hero in Heroes of the Storm. And in the art gallery at BlizzCon, they had this beautiful portrait of just Alex Straza's head. The, like, I think it was a render of her finished cinematic form. And it was beautiful. And from that image, I was like, hey, that looks like it could be a taxidermy. And then I thought, oh, that'd be cool if I could build like this giant posable taxidermy of a full scale dragon. Well, this dragon is not full scale, but it's a good way to try out the principles that I wanted to go through. Um, so yes, the goal was to make this posable, uh, flexible, and just a dragon shape uh, that can be customized to look like anything. So I may or may not make it look like Alex Straza. I'm still trying to decide, but you can see the finished form here. So in, in the time that I've, since that BlizzCon, I've kept my eye on art doll makers and studying their techniques and the materials they use. So this uses that plastic ball joint armature that you can get from eBay. There's a link in my description for where to find it. And it's this really neat stuff and I wanted a project to be able to use it. So I'm finally putting the effort into that. So without further ado, let's get into the creation of this base. So the first thing I like to do is to start out with a sketch to get an idea of where I'm going. Um, I liked how this sketch came out, so I decided to go forward with that. But this tiny drawing is no use to me. I need to make it bigger. And the fastest way I could think of to do it is take a transparency, trace over the basic shapes of my sketch and use my projector to project it on the wall and trace it again on a larger piece of paper. This old projector has come in handy a lot. I picked it up for super cheap, around $10, $15 from the State University surplus store. So go check one of those out if you're looking to pick one up yourself. With the larger scale drawing in hand, I decided to go back to the head and figure out what that shape looks like in 3D. And I do this by means of sculpting a small little figure of the head. I just sculpted one side of the face and it took me maybe like 20 minutes to reach this shape. So it was really quick. Um, and this helps me get an idea of the 3D. And now I'll show you how I take and pull the pattern from this little sketch. Now off camera, what I did was I covered this entire face with tape. Um, marked some little notes about what piece was what on that those pieces of tape and then moved it over to a transparency. Now to figure out like what scale I will need to blow this up at, I'll show you the formula that I use. So first I measure the clay figure that I have and what final figure I want. So you can see I have the 3.25 inches is about the length of the clay sculpt and 9.5 inches is roughly my target. Now if you think of these as fractions, you want the small scale head to be your full scale, so your 100% scale figure, and then we just need to solve for x, which is what scale the 9.5 would be. And using some handy dandy math formula that it's probably my most used formula from high school. You take the 9.5 and multiply it 
by the 100 and then divide it by the 3.25 and that equals x. So by my calculation, the full scale figure is 292% lar- like at 292% um, or I, I'm just kind of rounding that up to just slightly below three times larger. So my my hack way of being able to tell, tell what scale the projector is projecting is that I have these two bits of tape on the side. One of them, uh, well, on the projector, I've just taped them and they stay on my projector. One of them is an inch long and one is a centimeter long. And I just keep adjusting my projector until it gets to be about the right length. You can also compare it to your drawing that you already blew up. Um, and then you just tr- trace those pieces. Now this method of pattern making, it, it's it's very quick, but it's not very precise. I don't have any registration marks, but all I wanted to do is to quickly get out a basic shape because I know I will be adjusting that and customizing it in the future. I know I don't have those registration marks, but it's still very important to transfer any notes that I have like where the middle line is, where I need to flip over, or what pieces are what transferred onto my pattern. Then it's just a matter of transferring those pattern pieces to the foam, cutting it out, and gluing it together. I do want to talk about the pieces for the inner mouth part. Now, the clay figure, I just uh, taped the insides of the mouth like normal, but since foam has a dimension and I wanted the inside of the mouth to be inset slightly, I knew that these pieces would need to be trimmed down. So you see, I'll take a ballpoint pen and I'll sort of measure the width of the foam and lock my finger in place and use that to trace around all the edges. Um, and that, that just is a really easy way to, to get that measurement around all the curves and tricky edges. Then I just needed to trim off that excess and glue those to the inside of the mouth. Uh, an interesting challenge that I came across was how to mount this armature to a flat piece of wood because taxidermies, they're kind of mounted on a plaque. But how would I mount securely this flexible ball joint? So here's the solution I came up with. Using my laser cutter, I um, cut out two circles that really pressure fit the ball joint inside. That was a good fit in itself, but I needed something to lock them in tight. So I used other pieces and the sanding bit on my Dremel to kind of make these pieces that clip into place around them and really locking that one ball joint at the bottom of the chain in. Now this was just pressure fit, but like, man, it really held those chains in place and I can later glue and screw this to the, to any sort of plaque and it'll hold tight. The reason I wanted to use two uh, chains together was for the strength because I figured that one wouldn't be enough to hold up all this weight. One problem I do notice is that when you curve these in either way like they like one becomes shorter than the other. So I wanted to see two things. Number one, if this sort of movement and separation with the two chains, um, if that would interfere with each other, and two, if uh, the two chains together added enough strength to hold up this entire structure. Um, I was planning on making the head as lightweight as possible, but still, um, it, it needs to be fairly strong. Another thing with these armature It's like you need a special set of pliers that is very specifically shaped to be able to uh, open them up and push them back together. You can find those at the suppliers, but uh, it's, it's pretty impossible to try to 
break them apart or push them back together with your hands, especially at this thick of size. So from here, I, I am completely just doing a test. I'm putting the two chains together and I'm going to be covering them with uh, my fabric to just do a test to see if this would be strong enough or if I needed to go a different direction. I'm using quilt batting and wrapping it around the individual chains, securing it with some uh, thread and winding that around to just hold it in place better. And to save on some quilt batting and wrapping, I'm taking just a piece of upholstery foam and putting that in the middle to sort of bridge that gap. So like from my test, I learned a couple things that yes, this did seem like it would be strong enough. I'm really putting it through its paces. I put some heavy things in that bucket to test it and uh, the head definitely won't ever get that heavy. Um, um, also, I learned from this test that the movement of the two separate chains didn't seem to matter that much. So I decided to go forward with using this method. Um, and uh, But I did know that I need to be much better and tighter at the wrapping to keep it together more and with the tighter wrapping, it'll actually add some support as well and make it a little bit stronger. Next, just a quick solution for the hinging of the jaw. I just took some sculpting armature wire. It's, it's very soft and pliable. I looped it on itself a few times, took some spare pieces of foam and glued that wire to the foam covered it in a little bit of fabric to keep it together and then glued those to both sides and kind of looped it around the back for the jaw. Um, if I was to do this again, I would definitely make the wire part longer and have it go further along into the jaw and sort of pre-bend it to be like a little square at the back, if that makes sense. To, because I do, you'll see, I have a problem with the jaw not wanting to stay shut all the way. It kind of wants to hang open a little bit. Now, now I needed to secure the ball joint armature inside the head, and I thought the best way to do it would be to take some rigid foam. I used Foam at 4 from Smooth On, and use that to fill up the head while holding the ball joint armature inside. This stuff is crazy to work with. It expands so much and is pretty sticky. It works fast, uh, but it, it, it holds very well. Um, later on, I think that I don't think that I needed to fill up the bottom jaw that just added unnecessary weight. And I'm not sure that it was necessary uh, lessons learned, uh, but the, the top definitely held strong after this. And you can see I mixed up a little bit too much foam. It sort of overflowed. No worries. Once it's hard, you can trim it away with a utility knife. And you can see it works really well to hold that armature really securely to the head. Now for wrapping this armature for the final time for reels, I really spent a lot of time uh, really getting the batting and thread tight to each of the ball joints. Now I started, I used heavy duty upholstery thread that I had lying around and I started it with a slip knot that I could crank down tight. And then as I would go up, it was a sort of blanket stitch that I would loop around twice um, so that I could really pull it tight and crank it down and so that it wouldn't move that much. Um, 
And this worked really well to hold that batting down tight. And I did it like every inch or so up and down the, uh, the armature. Um, and I did that also with every layer that I would add. Now I couldn't go farther than wrapping the two lengths of, of armature once because I still needed the room to be able to screw this to the plaque, which we should go back and talk about that now. I started out with a sketch just simply on a folded sheet of paper so that I could keep it pretty symmetrical. Um, my idea that I was going for was sort of uh, based on the World of Warcraft logo. I don't know, I just came up with something. I took it into Adobe Illustrator, came up with a design, and I took it to my laser cutter to engrave and cut out. The finished dimensions of the plaque were larger than the cut bed, but I designed the pieces as such so that they could be cut out on my Glowforge and then uh, clamped and glued together after the fact. Uh, I only had uh, four clamps available to me in my lair. I should probably get more, but I only had those four clamps, so it was a process of gluing it together, but I still wanted to work on the dragon, so from here on out, you'll see uh, clamps at various stages of gluing the plaque together. After adding some glue, I pre-drilled a hole and screwed that whole assembly onto the rest of the plaque to secure it down. And after it was secured, it was time to build up the, the rest of the neck using the foam and the quilt batting and the thread as I've shown. You'll see me adding patches of you'll see me adding patches of quilt batting in at various places and sewing them in and I'm using a curved needle to help me do this sewing. Um, that is because I didn't want this neck to end up just a straight tube, so I'm using foam and batting to try to build up the shapes in a way to make it more natural. You know, it flares up down towards the base where it meets the plaque to simulate like that's where the shoulders would start to flare out or it gets a little thicker up at the top because this dragon might have like a, a one of those neck flabby areas so uh, just have fun with the shapes at this point if you're making one yourself because that's what I was doing. Now towards the end of building up the neck, and this is a technique that I found from a art doll maker on Instagram. The account is Victoria Nampesino. Um, she builds these incredible art dolls, and some of my favorites are her Harry Potter themed ones. There's this basilisk that she made, and she showed one image of the understructure and she had sewn up some of the quilt batting into these little ridges and that directly translated to detail on the finished doll. So what you'll see me doing here is trying that same technique. Um, I can use these ridges that I've built up to add, add that additional detail. I can use them as attachment points for horns and frills and spikes and other things. Uh, I thought it was really clever. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave a link in my description to where you can find her account. And here is the finished base. I'm really pleased with how it came out. There was a lot of problem solving and tricks to figure out while doing this, but I think that it moves well. It's fun to pose around. It'll be a lot easier to pose around once it's like mounted securely on a wall, 
but I digress. Um, I think this is, this will be a great starting point for me as I go forward and finish it. And it's a, it's a blank canvas right now. So it could go any direction. I could make a purple mystical dragon with a beard, or I could go red, angry, smog, fiery, pokey, and sharp builds. Like there, there's just tons you can do. And if you build this yourself, just changing the head shape slightly would give it a whole different personality. Um, of course, there's lots of improvements, things that I wish I could go back and fix, but I think that this is good enough for me to feel comfortable and moving forward. And uh, you, I've talked about some of the mistakes I've made and you can learn from them if you want to try making your own dragon taxidermy. So thank you so much for watching and allowing me to indulge myself with a project that was a lot of problem solving and figuring out something, doing something I haven't done before. It's really been good for my creativity to just build something new and exciting. So I hope you'll like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. I'm Kazul reminding you to embrace your inner beast.